Hello everyone, welcome to Business School 101. Game theory is one of the most powerful tools for analyzing strategic decision-making in a variety of business contexts. It provides a framework for modeling the interactions between decision-makers or players and predicting their behavior in different scenarios. So what is game theory? Are there some classic examples? Who developed it and how to apply it in the business world? In this video, I will discuss these questions with you. Section 1. A classic example. Before we introduce game theory, let's check one of its most classic examples. The prisoner's dilemma. Consider two suspects, Alice and Bob, who have been arrested for a crime. The police do not have enough evidence to convict either suspect, so they offer each of them a deal. If both Alice and Bob remain silent, they will each be sentenced to one year in jail. If one of them confesses and the other remains silent, the confessor will go free and the other will be sentenced to three years in jail. If both Alice and Bob confess, they will each be sentenced to two years in jail. This scenario can be modeled using game theory, where Alice and Bob are the players and their choices are to remain silent or confess. The outcomes of the game are the sentences they will receive. In this scenario, each player must consider the potential actions and strategies of the other player when making their own decision. If Alice believes that Bob will confess, then her optimal strategy is to confess as well, since she will receive a shorter sentence by doing so. Similarly, if Bob believes that Alice will confess, then his optimal strategy is to confess as well. The optimal outcome for both players is to remain silent, which results in a combined sentence of two years. However, if both players act in their own self-interest and confess, they will both receive a sentence of two years. This example illustrates the essence of game theory, which is to analyze the strategic interactions between decision makers to identify the optimal outcomes and strategies. Section 2. Introduction. Game theory is a branch of mathematics that studies how individuals or groups make decisions in situations where the outcome depends not only on their own actions, but also on the actions of others. In other words, the main goal of game theory is to identify the optimal strategies for each player in a given situation, taking into account the actions and strategies of other players. Besides the business field, game theory has a wide range of applications in fields such as economics, psychology, sociology, and biology, among others. Section 3. Key Contributors the development of game theory was a collaborative effort among many economists, mathematicians, and social scientists. However, there are several key figures who are considered to be major contributors to the development of game theory. First, John von Neumann. Von Neumann was a Hungarian-American mathematician and physicist who made significant contributions to many fields, including game theory. He is considered one of the founding fathers of game theory. Second, Oskar Morgenstern. Morgenstern was an Austrian-American economist who collaborated with von Neumann on the book Theory of Games and Economic Behavior. He is widely considered to be one of the pioneers of game theory. Third, John Nash. Nash was an American mathematician who made significant contributions to game theory, particularly in the area of non-cooperative games. He is best known for his concept of the Nash equilibrium, which is a key concept in game theory. Fourth, Lloyd Shapley. Shapley was an American mathematician and economist who made significant contributions to game theory, particularly in the area of cooperative games. He was awarded the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences in 2012 for his work in the field. Last, Robert Oman. Oman is an Israeli-American mathematician and economist who has made significant contributions to game theory, particularly in the area of repeated games. He was awarded the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences in 2005. Section 4. Applications. Game theory can be applied to various aspects of the business field. Here are a few examples. Number 1. Pricing strategies. Game theory can help businesses determine the optimal price for their products or services by analyzing the pricing strategies of their competitors. By modeling the interactions between firms in a competitive market, game theory can help businesses understand how changes in price may affect their market share and profitability. Number 2. Advertising? Game theory can be used to analyze the effectiveness of advertising campaigns by modeling the interactions between advertisers and consumers. By understanding how consumers respond to different advertising messages, businesses can design more effective marketing campaigns and maximize their return on investment. Number 3. Strategic Alliances. 
Game theory can help businesses evaluate the potential benefits and risks of forming strategic alliances with other firms. By modeling the interactions between two or more firms, game theory can help businesses understand how different types of alliances may affect their market share, profitability, and competitive position. Number 4. Competitive Analysis. Game theory can help businesses analyze the competitive landscape of their industry and identify the most effective strategies for gaining a competitive advantage. By modeling the interactions between firms in a competitive market, game theory can help businesses understand the behavior of their competitors and develop strategies for outmaneuvering them. Number 5. Mergers and Acquisitions. Game theory can be used to analyze the strategic interactions between firms involved in mergers and acquisitions. By modeling the potential outcomes of different merger scenarios, game theory can help businesses identify the most favorable outcomes and make informed decisions about mergers and acquisitions. Section 5. Steps of Analysis. The basic steps involved in using game theory to analyze a scenario are as follows. 1. Define the players. The first step in game theory is to define the players involved in the scenario. This could be individuals, groups, firms, or countries, depending on the context. 2. Define the actions and payoffs. The next step is to define the actions that each player can take and the resulting payoffs for each possible outcome. These payoffs represent the benefits or costs associated with each possible action for each player. 3. Model the game. The next step is to model the game using a game-theoretic framework, such as a payoff matrix or a decision tree. The game model represents the strategic interactions between the players and the possible outcomes based on their actions. 4. Analyze the strategies and outcomes. Once the game is modeled, it is possible to analyze the optimal strategies and outcomes for each player. 5. Consider the assumptions and limitations. Finally, it is important to consider the assumptions and limitations of the game theoretic model. It is also important to consider the ethical implications of the optimal strategies and outcomes and whether they align with societal values and norms. Section 6. Strategies. Here are some of the major strategies used in game theory. Number 1. Dominant strategy. A dominant strategy is a strategy that is always optimal, regardless of the actions of the other players. In other words, a player's dominant strategy is the best strategy to choose no matter what the other players do. Number 2. Nash Equilibrium. A Nash Equilibrium is a situation where no player can improve their outcome by changing their strategy, given the other player's strategies. In other words, a Nash Equilibrium is a stable outcome where all players are making the best decision, given the actions of the other players. Number 3. Tit for tat. Tit for tat is a strategy that involves cooperating on the first move and then matching the opponent's move in subsequent moves. This strategy is often effective in promoting cooperation between players. Number 4. Grim trigger. Grim trigger is a strategy that involves cooperating as long as the other player cooperates, but switching to defection if the other player defects. This strategy is often effective in punishing non-cooperative behavior. Number 5. Randomization. Randomization involves choosing a strategy randomly, according to a predetermined probability distribution. This can be effective in games where the other players cannot predict your behavior. These strategies can be used in different ways depending on the specific game being played, and players often need to use a combination of strategies to achieve the optimal outcome. Section 7. Limitations. Game theory is not without limitations. Here are some of its major drawbacks. Number 1. Assumes rational decision-making. Game theory assumes that decision-makers are rational and always act in their own best interests. However, in reality, decision-makers may not always behave rationally or may have conflicting interests. Number 2. Simplifies complex scenarios. Game theory often simplifies complex scenarios in order to make them easier to model and analyze. However, this simplification can sometimes result in a loss of accuracy or relevance. Number 3. May not always predict real-world outcomes. Game theory provides a theoretical framework for analyzing strategic interactions, but it may not always accurately predict real-world outcomes. This is because real-world scenarios may be influenced by factors that are not accounted for in the theoretical models. Number 4. Can be difficult to apply. Game theory can be complex and difficult to apply in practice. It requires a deep understanding of mathematical modeling and statistical analysis, which can be a barrier for many decision-makers. Section 8. 
Summary. To sum up, game theory is a powerful tool for analyzing strategic decision-making in a variety of business contexts. It provides a framework for modeling the interactions between decision-makers or players and predicting their behavior in different scenarios. By understanding the potential actions and strategies of their competitors, firms can make better decisions about pricing, marketing, product development, and other strategic considerations. All right, that's all for today's topic. If you have any questions regarding this video, please leave your thoughts in a comment below. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.